Hey there, Tennis Junkies. Today, we get to talk with Smitty from the Mains and Crosses Instagram, YouTube, and home stringing uh, business. I am super thrilled to get to sit down and talk with um, Smitty. He has been an idol in the stringing world of mine and has really pushed me to um, try new things on, on social media and in the stringing world and just, you know, push boundaries that people aren't really thinking about. Um, string's been around for a very long time, so the idea of changing a lot of things is kind of foreign to a lot of people. Um, but he's really, he's been a great supporter. Um, and I'm super excited to get to talk with him today. We talk a lot about the stringing industry, how he got started. And in the very end, we even talk about NFTs and cryptocurrency in the metaverse. Um, Smitty is one of the first people, uh, who's a home stringer to accept things like Bitcoin, Dogecoin and create, um, the metaverse, um, create some metaverse things. And we talk about that on on the podcast in this upcoming episode. Hope you guys enjoy it and let's get right into it. Hey there, Tennis Junkies. Today I am with Smitty from Mains and Crosses and we're gonna talk everything string and string industry related. So Smitty, can you just kind of introduce yourself and uh, explain who you are? Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Smitty, Mains and Crosses here. Uh, usually it's myself and my wife, but uh, she's got something else going on. But we're stringing right here in the DC area. I've uh, been doing this for my goodness, almost eight plus years now. So, you know, we started out just kind of like when I got out of the military, I just did a lot of tennis and I was in between jobs. So tennis was kind of a big thing, just kind of, you know, stress release, you know, stuff like that. I think we all have been there. And um, finally, I was like, I was trying to get my racket strong. I went to like sports store. I, you know, I was like, hey, at the time there was like all equal plays. And I was like, hey, when can I get my racket strong? And they're like, yeah, we got you. And it was like two weeks or something like that. So by the time, I got back and I was like, dude, man, this is too long. Went online, found a machine. At the time, there's like no literature, nothing about, you know, how to string a racket. And, you know, I, I just had a machine and just try to wing my way in there. So next thing you know, a couple of years later, um, I went out to just, you know, bother the minds of the greatest uh, David Wobb, big time tennis uh, down there. And when I saw him at the city open, you know, I taught me just a few things watching people in the industry uh, and then YouTube started getting popping a little bit. So I started watching some, some old school stringers there. And then um, next thing you know, you know, we're popping. And now I'm on your show right here, man. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> That's sweet. Cool. So um, starting off, I just kind of want to ask where you're stringing from. I know you said you're stringing in the DC area, but um, your situation is not a typical situation. Um, so I know you can talk about that. And then also um, what sort of clientele do you get um, on average, meaning like collegiate players, rec players, things like that. Right. You know, so we always represent ourselves. I say we're the, I think one of our logos was like off the bat, one of the, you know, the theme that we mentioned was like, hey, we'll treat you like the pros. And a lot of our main clientele is local um, tennis players, you know, weekend warriors. You know, I live in the DC area. So there's a lot of young professionals, people either played collegiate back in the days and now they're just playing recreationally. And, um, but I think most of my, my clients tells, you know, I, at first it was a lot of juniors, you know, a lot of juniors in this area just playing, you know, high school or middle school, stuff like that. And then there's a lot of people who were like 50 and 60 and above, but now we're getting some of that young professionals getting you know, into the area, moving into the DC area, a lot of government jobs. So I see a lot of that too. So, um, but we picked up a couple of tournaments that, you know, the local stuff that when they used to have um, world team tennis, we'll see a bunch of players here. Uh, we see Francis Racket from time to time here, so that's awesome that he's a local DMV player and he still supports the local stringers around here. Um, but mostly, I think it's just um, my bad. I think it's just mostly the you know the local community here, and that's how it all started. I played it a lot with the local. You know, when I started out my brand or start off you know stringing. I actually went to play with every single like group in the area. There's a couple groups, and I'll drive around with my wife and play doubles here and there. And that's how you know I built, I built my clientele. Nice. Cool. So um, in terms of where you're set up, I know you don't have like a storefront, you kind of do your thing um, in your house. So can you kind of explain how you got that started, what your system of drop off pickup is, things like that? Yeah, man. I think that's the most important. I think I was kind of the, the forerunner area, actually, you know, just kind of like pushing that local stringers out there, you know, and there's not too many, you know, professional stringers out here. So how was people who work, um, you know, nine to five, you know, stuck in traffic, stuff like that, how would they even get to these 10 to five, you know, store hours? So I was like, hey, let me try stringing from home. 
I started doing odd hours. I would do early in the morning, like around six to like 12. And then I'll do a little bit from like six to like 11 PM. I actually had clients who came 12, like AM midnight because they had to catch a flight to a tournament and stuff like that. And that worked mm-hmm. beautifully. And now that I've incorporated my mobile services. And I think that's been the new thing because obviously with COVID and social distancing, people are like, Hey, I have less time now. And I, I want to work from home. I can't get out. So I'll just drive up to them, have the machine behind my back, you know, string it on up, having for them literally like 15, 20 minutes or so. For yeah. yeah. I think it's, uh, cool. it's a new way, man. I think it's going to be like the Amazon or the Uber of streaming basically. Yeah. I, I love seeing the, the pickup dropout stuff. If, if for people who don't know, um, you can check out his Instagram at mains and crosses. I'll have it linked in the show notes too. Um, you can see the videos of his, uh, decked out Solinko Tesla and, um, uh, you can, you, you can string out the back of that while you're charging the car. And everyone who's saying, oh, you're wasting time while you're, nope, he's making money while he's charging the car. And I, I love seeing stuff like that. I think that is the new age, um, especially like Vin Wynn. I'm, I'm sure you know him. Um, he's doing oh, yeah, his yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so, that, yeah. yeah, he's he's out doing like midnight in the freaking crossways and stuff like that. That's, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely do think that's the new age is that whole travel and do it at people's houses. I, I think it's really cool. Awesome. So, um, how you, you said kind of how you got into stringing rackets, but kind of what gave you the idea to create like a, like a public business rather than just stringing for yourself and friends. So uh, off the back, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I didn't, I barely played any high school tennis. I was on the team. I played like lacrosse. I played other stuff. Like tennis was like my mid twenties. I always had a passion for it. My mom got me lessons when I was a kid, but I was just never that great at it. Um, and I never really focused too much on it. However, I am always about the money. I'm sure about, you know, every single time you hear amazing for us, we're always trying to figure something out financially. And for me, it was a financial thing. You know, I got out of the military 2012 and it was like, man, you know, I need a couple jobs, stuff like that. How would I supplement my income? You know, and streaming became that. I mean, I love playing. I think that's probably why I became a pretty decent stringer versus a player because, you know, you can separate it. Sometimes if you're a player, you're like, okay, I'm so you know, in tune of this. So I just focus on that. And then I incorporate the string, but if you're a stringer and you're looking from the outside, it just gives you a totally different perspective uh, in, in like techniques and stuff like that. But for me, it was more of a monetary thing. So I found that, that when I started this brand, like, Hey, I was making pretty good dough. You know, somebody who in my situation, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of family support and a plan, you know, but for somebody who's like, Hey, I enjoy tennis, you know, you're kind of in between jobs, stuff like that. You can supplement your money into this service that you do. And you, you're a professional stringer. You you take your time and you do the right thing. You're considered a professional. You're doing this not because it's the hobby or trying to get beer money like that. So I think those who want to consider themselves professionals, you know, you have to do the right thing. I don't care if you even have uh, a drop weight with composite clamps. You know, you can still be a professional and do your best job on that machine versus the electronic machine and stuff like that. But for me, I started out just taking pictures of random, you know, photos of rackets. Like, who the hell is going to care about this? And we all know tennis, I'm, come on now, tennis is not one of those like, yes, this is the most popular no, sport like in high school. Like, yeah, it's like basketball, football. This, you know, we're like right there next to the chess club and volleyball. We are, so, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it seems cool because, you know, you got people like Nadal, Federer, and all these younger, cooler cats looking. But honestly, like, I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo and then, you know, some mid-level tennis player, you know, Right. I mean, he's pretty well known, but it's like, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of younger hip stuff, you know, deals with those other types of sports. Anyway, I just thought that, man, who can give a crap about stringing, right? Like who, mm-hmm. like if the demographics of tennis is this small, the stringer has got to be like this. Because even str- tennis players don't even care about stringers sometimes. So it's like yep. they're very, very marginalized. So I thought that would be a cool thing to show people, you know, what it's all about. I think, we, I, think I still have an old Instagram post. Like I had only like. 40 followers and that was like most of my family you know and now you know we kind of grew up pretty big and got you know you've been watching you know all along so i appreciate that so we kind of build ourselves and there's so many great content now on online like obviously i'm not the greatest technical stringer but i wish i can help people build their brand and that's kind of what we did was like hey how to get your machines what type of products you should get who you should deal with how you should get these contracts how not to get these contracts or what not to do and things that we failed along because like Literally, we bought like, every single machine. We did every single string, every single marketing. And we kind of see what worked. And it might not work for everybody, but for us, like I said, at least we can give you a stepping stone. 
Yeah, I there were two things you said in that in that that I loved. Um, for one was the was the drop weight thing. A lot of people think you need a ten thousand dollar machine to string for other people, and you really don't. It's more about your personal knowledge. Like as long as you don't get some twenty dollar thing, um, you know, any right. like middle range machine, couple hundred bucks, like you can you make that back really fast. It's not it's not a crazy investment like people think. Right. Um, and, and you know, yeah. I started to cut you off. It's 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 crazy because the concept of you know, you being the best, what's the best stringer? You know, who's the best stringer? I mean, you can be like, hey, it's Ron Yu, it's um, Mike Stevens, something like that. I mean, those are great, you know, grand slam stringers that we know, right? But what about, you know, the guys are at home, like maybe they're just, if, I'm just thinking, if you can sell your product, you can sell yourself, then you can do this, you know? It, like I said, even if you do it wrong, let's say you consistently do it wrong according to whatever, but you, you're getting clients' help, so they're coming back, you're doing something right. So. I, I applaud you for that, at least the effort. Then obviously, you know, you, you can change and develop your skills as you go, but don't think that just because you just start. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to get my skills better and I'll charge more. But no, charge what you think you, you, you need, to, you know, you feel comfortable at your hourly rate and then go from there. It's not, you know, like I said, it's not who cares you have a drop weight and I have a constant, you know, constant pull machine. That's just, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, definitely. And the thing about the demographic is really interesting to me because you're right. Like tennis is such a small demographic. And then like tennis players who get their rackets restrung is an even smaller demographic than tennis players who realize like that there's an actual person stringing the racket is even smaller. So like, especially oh, on social media, like stringers are not big on social media. And like, in my opinion, you're probably one of the biggest stringing social media. I mean, like I was just looking at it and yours was... <laughs> you're at almost 9,000 followers and no one is near, like there's no other like stringing only yeah. social media that I can think of like that. Well, you know, I, I, maybe some of those clients tells or who are followers are probably like, we just clicked with this Bill Pitty brand. It's like, it's crazy <laughs> if you think about it. It's like, cause you know, like there's tennis coaches and like, man, um, I don't know if you follow two minute tennis.net. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Coach Ryan Reed, he's great, man. We, we used to piggyback all the time. Now he's just, He's just far beyond reach for me. So I'm like, I'm not even getting on his level, but like, like you said, the stringing demographic, if you just went solely straight on stringing, it's like so hard. Cause think about it, when people come in, it's like, I don't know what strings I'm using. I don't care, put whatever on it. So like, you think they're gonna be like, let me go find somebody on Instagram and follow yeah. him, see what the hell he does. Right. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to do with my like website stuff and like the podcast and the YouTube stuff, because I'm like, if I get a couple people who just came in from other things, they might start to understand how important stringing is and how important the stringer personally is and like building a relationship with who you bring your racket to. Like it's a lot of people don't realize that like you, there's a lot of faith put in whenever someone just drops off a racket to, to someone. And I think it's really cool right. to kind of like, I like you kind of pioneered the whole social media idea of uh, stringer. man. I wish I could take credit. Hopefully it goes in the books or something like that because like that's, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think from day one, I mean, I can call, people can call me on this all day, no matter all the bad stuff I say. Sometimes I'm, I'm much older now, but I used to say a lot of loosely angry stuff, you know, but I'm mature, but you can always depend on me on like trying to support the community. I think that's one of the biggest things. Like, hey, every single knowledge I had, like even wholesale price, I don't post it, but like if you came and asked me like, hey, what's this, what's this, what's this? I'm not gonna be like, well, I'm not going to help you out with that. I, I think everybody out here knew like most of my giveaways, stuff like that. That was like not like given, you know, any of that money was actually coming out of my pocket. I don't know if anybody knew about that. They, they might give you that product, but shipping time and all that stuff, that caught me shipping. I don't know, you guys ship recently. It was like 10 bucks, 11 bucks now for like priority. So we, we do that for you guys. And I think for me, it's just kind of like the more I reach people, I think a lot of people actually email me. I mean, I uh, started my own business. I actually went down to Florida. Um, Jupiter, uh, Jupiter stringings. Uh, and, and we went to do that um, little mo. It was like over 500 mm -hmm. kids. Like I actually met him like the first time uh, three months ago. He actually invited me down because he, he had like a uh, women's nationals to take care of. But this time I went back down again. But like, think about it. people I haven't met with him besides selling him a string machine about three years ago. So I'm two Bayardos. And this was the first year that I met him, like besides talking to him very briefly crazy that the community has uh at least social media is doing something great for us you know besides you know beating us down and you know messing with our uh with our mental state but um i think this is the great thing when people work together i, I met a lot of people that i would never meet like yourself like hopefully one day i'm sure maybe this summer we got to kick it somehow i'm sure i'm sure yeah. there's gotta be a tournament hopefully this COVID thing goes kind of i'm sure he's yeah. on out man 
I'm hoping so. Yeah, I, and I think that's part of like, the small demographic thing it can't it, like it can be a bad it, there's some negatives to it but like no one in the stringing world in my mind is so high above everyone else that like sending a message to say like mike stevens is not like he's going to respond to me and the fact that he does is crazy but it's like he's not getting overwhelmed with thousands of messages a day and i i think there's a big benefit to that like this like this right here i don't feel like i can just do this with anyone um and who's famous um and in like the tennis world it, it's just kind of i think the whole stringing world and like the interconnected webs that we've all created is really really cool oh most definitely most definitely i'm looking forward to that like i said i think uh we all have high hopes especially now with the whole new years i feel like everybody's like well 2021's a reset i'm i'm calling 2022 this has got to be the reset by now yeah um, okay, so I want to talk about some events you've done. I know you mentioned Little Mo and you had Women's Nationals, but what other events have you done? Um, and oh, in man. particular, what, what was your favorite out of all the events? Dude, uh, hands down, man, um, Kalamazoo. I mean, this is my first year doing it. It was supposed to be the year before that. Obviously, we had COVID, but it was last year, man. We got to meet uh, Matt P. You guys uh, know him from uh, Unstrung Heroes. Great. Um, Jay, he's been crazy, you know, commenting on everybody making the you know, support real good in that Facebook. Mike Stevens, I met the whole Slinkle team. Like it's crazy because the Slinkle team, like we've been working with them for quite a while actually. And this was the first time meeting them. So I think that was the greatest I had gift back there. We knocked over like, I think we averaged with about 30 rackets a night uh, between GIF and I and us, everybody else. That's probably around the rough estimate on how many rackets everybody did outside of the tent humidity we had a freaking tornado go through it was just crazy and every, you know i think out of all of them i go i uh i think i messed up like two one of them we caught the other one's like crap you know but like out of like all those 500 some rackets that we gif and i both did it, it, it was amazing so i think that was the best thing because it was like my first like i'm not it was a lot of rackets man i'm not gonna lie there i had to like now i know like use your tools stop using your face there's certain things there's so many things i learned Mike Stevens was, uh, man, he was great. You know, it's one of those things. Like, I was so scared because, you know, you're like, oh, my God, that's like, that, that would be like, hey, that's Federer right there. You know, it's like, yep. this is Mike Stevens. So when I saw right. him, I mean, I, you know, he's like this little small guy. And I was like, <laughs> and I came in late, too. So what happened? The flight got delayed. Everything was like, imagine you had a flight, everything perfectly planned, and it got delayed. On the way there, man, we almost got sideswiped by a tractor tail. It was just crazy leading yeah. up to that. We got there. Like around three, they already got the stuff going on. Everybody's chit chatting, and I, I we're all here late. But as soon as we came, man, everybody just clicked. I think it was the perfect team. Like we had, we had a senior he, who knew a lot, and then everybody else. I mean, Matt, he was like El Capitan, took care of all the admin stuff. I know he he was feeling under the weather too, so everybody kind of picked their plays and you know helped on out. But man, we were there for like seven to like eleven for like four days straight. I didn't think it was that bad. Like Giff and I, we almost didn't look at each other because we were like. If anybody mentioned anything, we're going to start going crazy. But I think that was like the greatest event, period. Um, uh, other events that we had was uh, WTA. We did that twice. And I think that's the biggest thing. I'm glad you mentioned that. I was like, uh, World Team Tennis, the only way we got that, that job was somebody um, wasn't able to do it, their old stringer. And for the people who are listening right now, man, I feel like a lot of people are like, how can I get in the tournament stringer? How can I become you know, the Mike Stevens or, you know, um, Ron Yu or, you know, RPNY. I think it has to do a little bit of luck and a little bit of having your, your crap together. Um, because what happened was they called me and they left a message like, hey, we're at the castles and the stringers that we used last year couldn't make it. Can you make it? I literally just jumped right in and called back and said, I'll do what I do, I'll do. Even before I even had anything going on, like I, I had work, I had family. I was like, you know what? I'll call everything off. Let me do it. And, um, you know, they talked it out. Everything worked out. I did that for the first year. Great. Uh, we met, uh, obviously, Francis Diafo, Brian's brothers, uh, Naomi Osaka, we strung for Venus. It was like a big thing, you know, that year. And then um, the following year, we were up on top of a roof, which was crazy. It was the first arena that we, like, we did, like, on top of, like, a, um, a building. Um, Francis was there. We got, man, we got, we had a whole squad, you know, so those were the opportunities. Like sometimes they come in and you just kind of like, man, uh, finance might not be ready. Sometimes I got to travel. Sometimes it's coming out of pocket. But I think it's one of those things if you're interested and you want to get into it, you kind of have to, I won't say pay your dues, but it's like, man, 
and you kind of have to really invest in this. Like, hey, I just I might not be getting any money out of this, but you'll get some exposure. So I think you know it's just a little bit of luck. I feel like it's a little bit of luck. If something just drops off, if you are ready to just be like, hey, I got three machines ready, I got streamers ready, let's do it. And I think that's the only way we got that you know um, account, and it was great. So I think uh, those are the two biggest events I've done. You know, obviously all the USTA around the area and stuff like that. But for me, I think those were the two highlights. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that the Kalamazoo thing, that was the same. Matt actually texted me and was like, hey, dude, like, let, like I need one more mm. stringer. And I was going to do it. And yeah, then you were busy stringing week. some other places, yeah. man. It was at ITF. I was so bummed. So I'm really hoping that this year um, he does the same thing because, like, I'm dying to do that. And I remember I was watching, I would watch your, your Instagram stories and I saw, like, your fingers and I saw that torrential downpour. And it was like, it was, it was, ridiculous and you guys are all sitting there just still stringing racket yeah. it's so funny now, i think it was fun like i think it was the first year too a lot of stuff that i mean i think now there's so many more logistics stuff that we know about so um if it was feasible and somehow it worked out i mean we should have had like six stringers maybe six machines we just got a lot of we got a lot of racket maybe i, I was surprised because like in my mind like 18 years old like that's like high school my cousin's in high school mm -hmm. they're breaking like four or five sets a, a practice a day and i'm like yep. all poly i'm so glad nobody used 18 by 20 i was like well please. really that was so most people yeah it was a lot 16, it was a lot 19. of um, open patterns a lot of open patterns but we had a couple mm. but it was like not enough to like it was 18 by 20 it was not like oh my god every single one of them which i'm like oh thank god you know because that would yeah. have definitely killed me yeah i i did like a division one invitational um in, in Texas and there were a lot of 18 by 20s. I was kind of shocked because I wasn't used to seeing that. And I would say that like the all red prestige, I probably did seven or eight of those. And like, I had never actually done that tight of a pattern and oh my goodness, that was terrible. So it's kind of interesting to hear that a lot of the juniors were still using the, the 1619s. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so what sort of trends do you see in the string world kind of moving into like- Man. Like what, yeah. what, what do you think is all biases aside, what string company and what string do you think is ruling the, the string world right now? You know, I mean, I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it real for you. I'm going to keep it real for you. I mean, string wise, product wise, with everything going on in the market right now, man, I just don't see anybody doing anything new. Like obviously the flagships are there, you know, you got your Lux Ones, you got your Bob a lot, RPM West, you got your Solinkos, you got, you know, and all that stuff, it's already been imprinted out there. And I feel like with everything going on with uh, sh you know, shortage of shipments and stuff like that, and you know, price hikes, I don't think they're gonna develop any more strings, at least string wise, man, it's, it's either gonna rebrand certain things. I just feel like it's gonna be very muted. I think they did a lot of stuff towards the end of the year, like just, just pushing out products. Um, Lexlon, it, for instance, they were doing like the different colors, neon, red, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I just feel like, you know, to invent a new type of material and market it, it's just not feasible for these companies. So I feel like what they're going to do is they're going to kind of keep on steamrolling what they have, their flagship strings, you know, uh, Solinko, Torbyte, Hyper-G, and uh, Confidential. Those are the three, you know, Solinkos that, that I feel, even, actually Outlast, out, since, uh, since, um, Jason uh, Brooksby? Yeah. 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 All of a sudden, everybody wants to use it. And I'm not going to lie. I tried them. I actually played better with them than any other. That's, that's really? I, I still kind of like, hey, man, I'm hoping that bandwagon is. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you, I tried a 17 games. Like, this is like the perfect string for me. And um, it's like, it's less than 100 bucks to the real. This is mm -hmm. not happening. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, these trends, I, I feel, I, I'm going to be honest, man. I feel like anything that's coming out right now, it's going to be a rebrand. And, you know, for me, you might, you might get banned from this, uh, if you post this stuff, but who, who knows? Like, I just feel like there's just no more innovation right now because right, the R and D and the money is just not there. And I feel like mm -hmm. we've seen it towards the end of the other year, or the end of the year of um, that, that um, these rackets are just producing new colorways, doing these limited editions. Like just nobody, you know, nobody's putting any more real R and D besides the Clash. Clash was big, and of course, Linkos has had their new white out blackout. Mm -hmm. That's something's worth to try because it's new on the market. But I just feel like the other companies just changing pace. Yeah, that's just the way I feel. Thinking about the string stuff, there's two, um, oh, what was I going to say? 
Oh yeah. The, I think it's interesting that you say that it's just different versions. Cause I completely agree that like nothing new is coming. Like for example, instead of head releasing a new string they're like, let's just make head links touch instead of making an actual new string. And I'm like, who need, we don't need head links touch. Like you guys have 20 versions of the same string and some of them are just a little bit sharper. Um, but I think the one company that tried was Babolat with the, with the RPM soft. And it was really just, mm. it, it's just origin, right? Is it just, it right. feels just so like origin? I, mean, I actually, I feel like it's, I don't know. I like it. I actually really like it. And, really? I, um, oh, I hate I, it. Oh, I hate yeah. it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I see. Maybe I see a lot of juniors too. Maybe I don't know. It just really depends on your demographics. I have a lot of once they seniors. Like I said, a lot of NXT and XL and a lot of uh, what's that called? Uh, Technofiber energy. So mm -hmm. I have to kind of live in that multi world. And I feel like actually yeah. now you mentioned it. I feel like multi is is gonna be the it string. That's why they're coming up with these softer strings, like softer polys. But ultimately, these type of monofilament, these softer type um, materials are. are because think about it, when we had that shutdown, there's so many more new tennis players in the community now, especially, mm -hmm. you know, brand new starting out. And maybe they need softer strings. And you hear it all the time. It's like, what, you know, hey, get off the poly, get off the poly, you know, maybe a thinner gauge, stuff like that. So now people are actually listening and feeling, hey, this might work out. Poly's still going to be there for the professionals. But I feel like a lot of people coming in, they're like, I have arm issues. I have arm issues. or, mm -hmm. or. And of course, we all know, String aggravates it. It shouldn't be the number one cause, but it does, you know, lead to, you know, tennis elbow and all these wrist injuries, but it could be your form also, you know, whatever, racket. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I feel like the trend, if you were a companion for this year, it's going to be a softer multi, softer poly. So anything that a brand will do right now, it would probably have to be more on the soft side, guaranteed. You'll see that going off your shelf, RPM soft, um, NXTs, even and NXT triads. has their, their variants. Those two. Yeah. Oh, tries. That's like triads. perfect. Every yeah. time they're like, hey, I don't want to go full poly act. Uh, I'll go kind of multi and uh, that, you know, poly fusion technology that they have. I think that's that's the way to go. And I sell a lot of those. And if you're a stringer, guys, I mean, I know the price has gone up. I think the whole market, right? I mean, the yeah. whole price has gone up. However, you still make better margin off of real. You still make better margin off of multi, you know? So, um, uh, not for us. We, we charge one base price, but if you guys are looking to make some bang for your bucks, um, multi, multi is the way to go. Yeah. Well, and I think a big part of that trend is because the rackets, to me, in my opinion, are starting to get stiffer. I feel like a lot of companies are going with the thicker beams, um, but that's kind of, maybe that's just me, but I, especially Babylon, but Babylon's always had issues with arms, but um I don't know. I just feel like a lot of the newer rackets coming out, I've been surprised that they, they felt stiffer to me, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. See, it's, it's interesting because, you know, all the old school, like if you ever use, like, if you ever get strong, those old school, like head made in Austria rackets, they're mm -hmm. like solid core. You would think they have no flex, but that racket was, I think it's the material we use. I don't know. It's the graphite or, you know, trying to cut corners or whatever. Maybe just being more hollow. Who knows? Right. Um, that's all physics. I'm not on that, but I feel like how how is racket back in 19, the 19, you know 1999, you know 1995? How are they actually feeling? Why do players are looking for those type of old school, you know, rackets versus playing with the new ones? So that's kind of interesting too. Like, hey, people are trying to like move back into time. You know, players who are enthusiasts and play. I think a lot of these younger, you know, they grow up. Hey, let me just take this cool color and go with that, and they really have nothing to compare it to, you know. But I think you know if you're in, you know, if you're 30 and above, you're comparing older old school rackets. That's the, the, the given. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because like one racket that seems to me like everyone always wants the older version is the E-Zone. Everyone wants the DR. Like literally everyone is like, I hope this one's like the DR. I hope this one's like the DR. And, I, and everyone's like, well, why do you love the DR? And they're all like, well, it's so soft on your arm. And I was like, I kind of wonder if they're making it out of some sort of different material that's really just not like giving enough for players. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I remember those DRs, and I actually, I think I had one—the one in the neon green, the original one mm -hmm. that came out. And even before that, like that version before, I thought it, it played pretty well because it wasn't like too soft, but it, it was like a solid soft bracket. And then all of a sudden, like that next year, the rendition, like it, it was just it just went totally off when they went to the E zone or something like that. Yeah. Totally. Um, okay, so I want to kind of talk about uh, your relationship with Selenko. You talked about them a little bit. Um, anyone oh, who man. follows you know that Selenko is your people. So how did you kind of get in the door with them and, and grow that? Well, you know, they handed me like at least, you know, 25,000, you know, no, I'm joking. Uh, 
it's funny, you know, believe it or not, uh, 2017, 2016, when they first launched Hyper G, um, we just kind of started tournament streaming. And I think we had an event uh, called Serving for Heroes, a big, big uh, in the DC area. Basically, Serving for Heroes is a charity tennis tournament, uh, USTA sanctioned that uh, donated all their proceeds to our military kids, which, you know, helps out the, um, the armed forces and the kids doing activities such as tennis or anything that late, whatever stuff like that. So we were like, hey, we're going to be part of that. I don't know if you know, I'm a veteran myself. And, um, you know, I thought it was a great cause. I, I think I emailed like, hey, Slinko, you guys, it seems like a cool brand because like I, I see collegiate players play with it. So I was like, let me give them a call up. I'm not sure who I contacted. They sent some stuff out. Uh, I bought some stuff and they just kind of gave me like you know, all these promotional stuff. And I was like, they're pretty cool, man. So I went to, to the tournament. Not too many people knew about Slink at the time. And I, it was funny when Hyper G came out, people were like, Ugh, that green, I don't know. And, and now it's like their signature thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, think what, I think their, their thing was um, when um, Sam Query beat no, uh, Novak in Wimbledon. And everybody's like, Who, what kind of green what, strings are you using? Like, yep. Boom, that was that Dragon Slayer. That was Hyper G. And uh, we, we make a joke, uh, you know, because my wife name is Gif. And uh, she's like, you know, they really named it after Gif, you know. So that's a <laughs> yeah. that's an inside thing. They they won't admit it, but um so we lost touch a little bit because honestly, I mean we were nobody. I mean I'm sure they had junior accounts that had to deal with anyway. So we kind of fell off and I kind of focused my my time with more Wilson and stuff like that. And then um just this past year, I'm not sure if you you knew that I actually had a master class in Thailand with head. Oh, wow. Um mm -hmm. I think we had over like 15, I think I still have on YouTube, um over 15 um uh, players, people in the industry in Thailand come watch, you know, how to teach, show them how to teach the uh, importance of streaming and stuff like that. So the guy who ran that is um, the distributor of uh, Stilinko in Thailand. So he's like, hey, you need to talk to Casey. You need to talk to Casey. I'm like, who's Casey? I, at first, you know, I was like, so they got us together. We started linking up. And he's like, hey, Smitty, I like what you're doing with our brand. Um, you seem to have good trends. So I think that summer was that out, you know, that breakthrough summer we did that, um, that treasure hunt at the U.S. Open, like in KT, was like that, that. That was dope. Yeah. So I mean, I'm cool. surprised people got like literally. Like, I didn't realize how many people were out there, and um, literally, no joke. I wish this was like captured, but like I was talking to KT, the owner of Slinko, and we just we just met for the first time, and we're shaking hands. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, somebody taps me on the back, like, "Yo, Smith, you're amazing, crosses, right? I just follow you on on um on YouTube, right?" And uh, he was wearing the Slinko hat, so yeah. I got this for a giveaway. So I bet the, the, uh, the Slinko guys are like, this is paid actors, and sh you know, and crap. So it's just kind of like, everything's kind of fell through, you know, just, it, it worked out perfectly for us. But um, they're honestly, I mean, this is almost like family. I'm not sure you, have you dealt with any um, uh, distributors or brands or reps? Or um, I, I've dealt with Diadem a good bit and with Matt a bunch with the Slinko yeah. stuff, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can just tell by Matt and even the diet. I mean, I, Adam, right? Is it Adam? Is it Adam for Diet? Well, Adam Frio, yeah. I at the time I had um, Corbin Gapsky because he was like the Texas rep, but okay. I I've talked more with Adam about it than it, but I just ordered through the through the. Texas but thing. they talked to you. They actually contacted yeah. you. They emailed you. There, it's you might not get that from other brands. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. telling you right now. So when and, the, and Matt, he he represents the link like nobody else. So if he took the time to respond back and did all the stuff, the legwork for you. I was like, this is somebody who I want to work with. I think that's a big thing, guys. We have leverage now. I've been saying this for a long time. Um, you can you can call me on it. I have so many videos talking about, hey, there's going to be a string shortage. It might be something that you might want to start investing into a string right now because in a couple of years, we're going to be so valuable. And I, I hate to say it, but it took COVID, which is horrible, to actually make people realize that, hey, how important the string community is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt like, my voice wasn't being heard from these other brands. Of course, they're huge. They're talking, you know, they're dealing with Nadal and Gail Monfils or whoever, you know. So Selenko is the only one who called me back. And like, literally, that's, it could be a rap song, you know. <laughs> like, it's like, they're the people who actually, like, supported me from day one. Like, hey, Smitty. And not just, you know, with, with um, strings. And it's just support, you know. They, I asked them about that. Um, hey, we were going to run a shop. Actually, right before U.S. Open, it was in Soho. Um, there's a pop-up shop. And uh, Patterson, if you, haven't, if you haven't checked out Patterson, go check their out. They do kind of a tennis street wear skater clothes type thing, but it's very tennis based. Uh, but we had a stringing session there with them and Slinko was like, hey, let me send you some stuff. 
for your giveaways and stuff like that. Send me out to New York, did that. Boom. Next thing we did was the US Open, send me all the stuff. Actually paid me with my, like, like that was the first time being paid, like, with, with finance. I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm not just getting, um, you know, um, strings or I'm not just getting rackets or whatever or a goodie bag. No, I, I mean, I think that at that point, like, man, we did so much work for them or, you know, and they appreciated. So the fact that they, they even thought that we we're even anywhere near close of their profession and, and their and their level, I was like, this is awesome. And I can roll with this. And that's why I, I'm team Selenko all the way. Um, I brush my teeth in the morning. I'm singing Selenko. I'm thinking about, you know, and that's, that's what you do, right? When you're family, you're like, hey, how can we get rich together? How can we move on to the next stuff? How can I make this podcast blow up? Or, you know, you know, thinking of things like that. So I think it's, I think it's amazing that, we need to stick together, man. I told, I, I've been saying this day one, Slinko is the people string. The people string, the people stringers. Like they take care of the stringers. And I feel like we can move that, that, that movement. I think as a community, we got to stick together. I feel like there's just so much segregation between professional or whatever. And, you know, I might be overthinking it, but at, at some point, you know, it's such a huge gap between, you know, professional stringer and then these elite Grand Slam, you know, why don't we just make the level field kind of, you know, kind of even out a little bit more? So I yeah. feel like Selenko is doing that for us, uh, giving, I'm sure with you, giving the greatest price, giving the greatest customer service. Shout out to Norm, shout out to Nate, to um, at Selenko, always hooking up every single order, email, text message. And it's basically family over here. Yeah, I think that is like that. I completely agree with the way that Selenko operates. And I think one of the um, things that really stuck out to me whenever I was working with Matt was that it wasn't one of those things where he he would text me once a week and be like, hey, Kyle, do you want to order more string? It was like, hey, oh. how are you doing? What like what are you up to? And like there were times when like I would be stringing a racket and I'd be like, man, I don't like I feel I don't understand how I haven't done this correctly. And there was even one time that I was doing some weird prints, 03 something. I I messed something up and I was super confused on how to fix it. And I literally just my last ditch effort, I just called Matt on his personal phone number. I just called and he answered and he sat there and walked me through it. Didn't say anything about the brand. And he was just like, he just cared. And brands don't do that now. That's just not, that's not the way that they operate. They, uh, man, it's, yeah, that's it's about yeah. that dollar dollar bill, man. I'm telling you, man. I mean, it's uh, money sometimes evil. Sometimes that, that changes people, changes the brand, changes the mentality, changes the, the flow of things. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk about something that I have little to no understanding of. Um, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. I'm so excited. Okay, so I know that you accept cryptocurrency um, as a way right. of payment. And I kind of, I get that. I understand the way Bitcoin works, Dogecoin, all that kind of stuff. What I don't understand is all the NFT and metaverse stuff. So I want you to talk some more about how, explain how you got into the idea of the metaverse stuff, oh, man. what you're doing with it and uh, how to make some so, money from it. I'm glad, brother. I'm glad because God, I'm telling you, man, I'm going to give you this alpha. That's what they call it in the, um, the digital world, passing on the alpha, which is like the, the knowledge. Um, you, um, I don't know if you followed me during the whole pandemic wise. I was like, yeah. there's... I hate it when there's no content and you're trying to push like old school content, just trying to keep things fresh. If I don't have anything, that's probably because I don't have anything. I'm not mm -hmm. going to recycle, you know, certain things to, to make things fresh. But I remember during COVID, I think we all felt it. Um, unemployment, you know, job stayed still. You know, I was getting some rackets here and there. But the only thing that was keeping my lives was finances. And every day I came up, I did maybe a couple, like three or four weeks about, you know, day trading and stuff like that. Try to get people in. And some people are like, yo, Smitty, you shouldn't give me more financial. And of course, it's not financial advice. Actually, that should be an asterisk. This is not financial advice, but I'm always getting people to, hey, what are you doing with your money? You know, what are you doing with, you know, the string jobs that you're doing? Are you, are you saving it? Are you spending it? What are you doing with it? So for me, I run a family um, and, and, and I'm the main provider. So with the NFT world, it's going to be popping, guys. I'm not sure, you know, the, who doesn't know Eminem, right? Who doesn't know Snoop Dogg? Like they just literally just got the Super Bowl spot uh, this year, I don't know if you knew about that, but they're gonna be this. But um, they're gonna do the Super Bowl spot, and Eminem just bought like a four hundred thousand dollar NFT, which is like um, the board ape. I'm sure you've seen these apes everywhere, you know, yep. um, all over. And there's always rendition like mine's over here, me and Nate wise. Um, Snoop Dogg actually has a place in the metaverse um, that sold. He had two sellings, so I think he had like one hundred places, you know, one square boxes of of land. Sold out in five minutes for about 
twenty-six million dollars in transactions. So that's that's huge money, right? Money yeah. that I can't even I can't even about. comprehend. Yeah. Right, right. And this this stuff is just air. This is you know, if you ever watch um Wolf of Wall Street, this is just it's, it's really but it's not, think about it, man. Company successful like Facebook, right? Everybody knows Facebook, right? They change they change the name to meta. Like how big how big does it have to get? Like, does it have to be Google change your name to Mega to Google or whatever? Facebook is pretty huge. And if they are saying that we're moving to this metaverse, um, then that's what we got to do. And I feel like as, as a stringer and an entrepreneur and a businessman and people looking in the future, that's going to be the way, man. And the NFTs, if you don't know what's non-fungible tokens, I'm not going to go into it. You guys can research about it. So basically, let's say you have, um, let's feel it. Well, I can just save that picture. I can save this picture behind me. If you go to the Louvre and you go take a picture of the Mona Lisa, right? You're like, see, I got the Mona Lisa right here. Why, why would I be paying, you know, $3 billion for this Mona Lisa? The fact that you have in your computer or your phone or whatever doesn't mean you own it. If you think about it, you can snap any picture. It's like, hey, I can take a picture of the house. I don't own that house. NFTs are the new digital way of making legitimate transfer or legitimate um, documents um, legal in this, in this digital world. So I think if you start getting into the digital cryptocurrency, because you always hear like Dogecoin, Bitcoin, you, you always hear it as like a, a, a piece of asset that you spend money on. You have to do a little research. I, I advise you guys, all you young stringers out there, please do some research because it's going to be the future. Web3 is here. It's here to stay. People talked about, well, back in the days, you know, I'm sure you had family photos and albums. They're like, who's going to take digital photos? You know, everybody wants the album. Ain't nobody looking through your photo albums anymore. It's through Facebook, it's through that. This is going to be the next step. And I feel like the metaverse is going to be kind of what we're living in right now, social media. Think about it. We're on social media. We're on YouTube. YouTube, it's just, it's, it, even right now, it, it could be scripted. It's one-on-one. -on -one, it's recorded. It's preempted. But the Web3 metaverse is where people can actually get the YouTube part, but be in the community at the same time live. You know, so it's actually a community that's built up in this internet world. It's basically just like a chat room back in the day. Anyway, back into this NFT. I started taking these crypto um, currencies just to see the test, like how people would respond with tennis. Like, so let's say you had Bitcoin right now. I was like, hey, if, if I'll string your racket for one Bitcoin, you'd be like, crap, no, right? You're like, no, yeah. it's like 60,000 or 50,000. I think, I think it went down, it's like 40 now. But it's still 40,000. But at the time, I think somebody spent like 20 Bitcoin for a pizza or something like that. Yeah, I and saw now that. it's like, yeah, that's crazy now. So I'm thinking how far as a stringer I can get away with crypto. And, I, and it's, a, it's a social experiment that I had some who's willing to give out these coins for exchange of um, stringing. And I only do this for service, right? I only do this for, I'm doing this for things that I can sell, like, like stringing and stuff. The mm -hmm. service, see, there's not much, it's like 15 bucks. So I would translate that into, let's say, I think I definitely took some Doge and they gave me that. So in my mind, I'm assuming if he's going to do this transaction, that means he must have enough Doge, even thinking in the future, if he invested this already, he's already a Doge millionaire somehow, he can spare some of these chains for me, you know? So if you were going to buy Doge right now, it's like, well, it's the equivalent. So for him, he already has the money. That means he can spend it easily without even, worried about where this would go let's say in the future it goes to like a, a dollar a piece he would go crazy right or whatever but for us i think it'll be a great way to move transactions it's, it's people to people because think about all the venmo i think this year venmo i think if it's over 500 bucks you start getting taxes on it yep uh, and i saw that of course i pay my taxes too but i'm saying like i don't want them to like every single cent and penny uh, on top of the tax they're going to take a different percentage you know paypal is 2.9 percent credit cards by 2.9 percent all these little chump changes are getting taken away from us. And of course, if let's say you got to Venmo, like crap, I need this gas right now. You do a withdrawal, An same transfer. day. They're, yeah. yeah, they're going to charge you another 10% or whatever percent it is. So by the time you actually get the money, it's already diluted in the, on top of inflation. You know, so I'm like, let me try something else. So for me, that's, what, that's when I started thinking, maybe we should try something else. The metaverse, I just started with the sandbox. Actually, I have a plot of land and uh, this land... Um, it's called the Sandbox. It has about, right now, they're limited to 166,000 um, parcels. So these lands that, that you see me make these video games on. And what that means is I can create video games and you guys see my posts and put it on there. 
in the future, people can actually go in there and actually play and interact. I actually made a Selenko showroom. Have you seen that yet? Oh, I've a seen it. A little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so going in and you can have like freaking Matt over there. I can give him an avatar and like, hey, I'm Matt. Let me show you around Selenko world or, you know, stuff like that. And he'll just interact and he actually, maybe one day can be automated and then one day he actually come in and actually do a like training. Like, hey, this is what the company is all about. But, you know, everything's funny now because everything looks like Minecraft players and pixelated and stuff like that. But, you know, I think that's the fun part. You know, I feel like, you know, I have an avatar and it's a girl, <laughs> you know, that you, you never know who you are and you can all gather together versus like, hey, I have to go fly for a seminar. You know, if I had like, um, like a, a tennis convention or a streaming convention, we would all have to fly and get together. And I think we all know with social media, people working from home, um, this metaverse, this space is great for that, you know, Zoom call and face-to-face -face and all these things that you can do, play games, maybe you can have a product release, stuff like that. And everybody's always into those limited edition type things. You know, you hear about, I'm not sure if you're a sneakerhead or anything like that. Oh my God, Selenko only has 10 of these limited edition titanium rackets or whatever. And the only way you can buy it is at the metaverse media. Yep. Go check it now. And you would have to buy that NFT, trade that NFT for the product in real life. And that's how that would work in, in, the, in the limited. That's why you see stars like Steph Curry, um, you know, Katy Perry, uh, Orlando Bloom, um, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, they're all investing into this metaverse because it's on top of owning the rights of, of these products, you own a digital picture which you can use on this meta world also. So you can play digital tennis and you'll have that racket in real life. So it's just not one thing or the other, you know, some people think, oh, I'm buying toys, but no, you actually get that in real life. And I think everybody who ever played Call of Duty, ever played stuff like that, ever bought skins, bought stuff, wow, you know, all that stuff. You spent all that stuff, but that product belongs to that company. You don't actually own them. Let's say your password got deleted or you messed up with some agreement. They can delete your stuff and you do not own any of that property. NFTs is the way that you actually own it digitally in the world. And it says, hey, uh, Kyle or Smitty, you own that freaking product and, and nobody can debate you on it. Because people are like, well, I did that first. No way. Now I can actually go on the record. Mark my word, guys. Mark my word today. Selenko and Mason Crosses was the first one that was making a tennis stadium, making tennis video games, and advertising NFTs. The first one in the world. I haven't seen Wilson do it. I haven't seen Bob Lott. Ted. I feel like everything I say, I'm like, I'm talking from the future. I hate sounding like Kanye West, but I feel like I'm talking into the future here, in, back, back into the past. Like, do you guys not get it? Like, hey, I did an, I think actually I did an NFT launch uh, with the Selenko um, rackets, and they're like, everybody's like, you know, I, I just think you guys aren't ready yet. You guys aren't ready yet. It's cool to hear you describe them that way because, like, to me, I, I, I can wrap my head around it whenever I think about it. I think of, like, my parents, and I totally mm. get how my parents, just they just, they can't wrap their heads around it. But to me, the best way of describing it for people who don't get it, for the NFT portion, I always think of it like a trademark. Like, like you've, like, patented and trademarked that item. Like, like you own it. Other people might see it or have a picture of it but like it's yours like no matter what that's yours and for the metaverse i think the coolest way i've thought about it was um i it's kind of corny i don't know if you saw the like fortnite travis scott concert thing i think of that where fortnite did like some big event thing and everyone logs on all at the same time there's a big countdown everyone loads in and yes it's just it's just a couple of like avatars and but everyone is like there and right. like they're there in it's cool because like there's still like a community feel to it because like you're looking at actual people and these people across the world really connected all at the same time to do the same thing and you're all doing it together even if it's not in person and that's how i've always thought of the, the metaverse how it works. you are absolutely right Kyle, you, you might be asking you look like a young how old are you if you might be asking 19. Not, damn you're young so <laughs> I guarantee your parents did not know how to use Facebook, how to do email back in the days. So, I mean, you're still young. Yeah. Your parents might be still young. So people had a hard time. Grandma had a hard time using Facebook mm -hmm. and Google. This COVID, right. what, what happened? Grandma all of a sudden knows how to use Facebook and Google. She can do Zoom. Um, we got grandparents Zooming now. It's great. <laughs> right, right. So everybody's pushed. It feels like the kids just want to move away from the parents. It's like Web3 is like, let me move away from you know TikTok, Instagram, stuff like that. Now they're moving on now. Eventually, it will have to be adopted it, you know because and think about it those who didn't adapt right they just what happened they just they just disappear like hey um kyle can you show me how to turn on this computer you know I, come on i'm sure your mom or somebody had to ask you some questions oh absolutely my mom asked me all the time 
what's my password? You know, it's yeah. not going to be like that anymore. So I feel like if you miss out right now, you're missing out on generational wealth. And that's the huge thing, guys. I mean, I wasn't born with a silver spoon and I wish I can have the silver spoon for my kids this time. I think this is our turn, our turn for those who, I don't want to get off political, but I feel like, you know, those who are working hard, you know, you and I, we're actually, this streaming is hand labor, you know? It's hard. You right? People don't get it. It's, you can't, it's difficult. You can't NFT this thing, man. I, I, and even, even valets, I mean, they're parking cars or whatever. I'm, I'm, giving, I even, I'm giving them 10 bucks. I feel like five bucks is almost like, I feel bad for them, but 10 bucks, if, if they can park a car, which not everybody can park cars, but I'm just saying like, if they're getting 10 bucks for parking cars, I think I deserve a little bit more than 15 bucks or 20 bucks. I'm just saying, I'm just, I, I mean, I'm being very biased, but I feel like guys, we, we have the power right now. And I feel like that generational wealth, that's why I'm, I'm coming with you with these alpha. Um, you guys got to get into it because if you missed out on this, imagine being a part of that whole Bitcoin, right? I think you're just so young right now, but imagine I was in there. Like I could, this could be a whole different life for you guys, you know? So if you get into the metaverse now, and I'm trying to explain this to this Lingo guy, he's kind of like, hey man, it seems like a wild idea, but every single wild idea it has so far came to, to be true. Think about it. Um, home stringers wasn't a big thing back in the day. They were like, oh, mm. everybody's going to go to the pro shop. Who's going to come to a, a door, you know? And, um, or Uber, like, I've been, oh, these taxis, they're like, oh my God, who's going to think about it? Even Amazon Prime, they hire contractors. All these are contractors. We could be contractors ourselves if we had the right, you know, people, you know, guiding our way. So I'm thinking, hey, this metaverse is a great time for exposure. People are going to be on it all day and every day. Uh, believe it or not, you'll start seeing more pictures with these NFTs and pictures and stuff. It's not even your avatar. Nobody wants to show a picture of their face anymore. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to show like a little doggy or a little dinosaur or whatever. And like, hey, that's Smitty. Smitty's going to be known for that little mummy or that little, and I think I was doing that with that, with gifts is uh, that little, the girl holding the tennis ball and we started that and i was like yeah because we don't want our faces there we're ugly let's use this picture and that will be the mason cross logo same thing with logo how about you change that logo into a character or, or something it could be anything it doesn't have to be a character. maybe it's a letter or something whatever it is it has to be your own and the fact that the other picture was drawn by somebody else i don't own that picture you know and actually we had an agreement if i was going to use that for royalties and money I would have to pay her, which I don't mind. She's a great artist, but it's not my own. This one, you can be like, hey, I legally own, um, you know, this brand and, and nobody can say anything about it. It's a legal document because it's digitalized on the blockchain and it cannot be destroyed, it cannot, which is kind of scary because you can track things down, certain things. But for me, I'm docs. Docs means like you're kind of known to the public. You have all the your information out there. So some people are secretive. Like if you're trying to be like some you know scary um do some shady stuff of course you do not want to be doxxed or want to be known about it but for me like hey i'm a tennis guy this is what i do this is my wallet address and it's publicly shown you see exactly what i own how much i bought it for you know exactly everything is transparent and i think that's what we need because these companies aren't coming in it's like hey man you know we're gonna raise tw like two three bucks for the stringing but you don't know what's going on in the background you know if, if the company said, hey, it's going to be 25 bucks for you, that's all you got to do. It's like, well, either pay 25 bucks or move on to a different company. You really have no say. This one, you're kind of transparent to see that every transaction this company made, you know, how, how, how bold are they to show their documents? Like, you know, hey, show me your taxes and show me your things. NFT is going to do that for us. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm glad we got to talk about it because that, I totally agree that um, the whole stringing world and the whole tennis world is definitely going to change pretty quick. And uh, it's kind of cool to think about like the Bitcoin thing about how it was like, everyone's like, Oh, this is gonna be a complete joke. And now it's like becoming a legitimate form of payment. And people are really making a lot of money from just accepting these little coins online. Kyle, about how many times, I, don't know, I mean, you seem like a very successful, you know, you're 19 now. I don't know how much bad stuff that if, if I had a dollar every single time down, I'd be like, this is a bad idea. Odds are they're right. But every once in a while, you kind of get that one in and it works out. And that's all you need in life. I feel like you just keep on trying. I feel like stringers do that. Like, we'll string and like, crap. Your client be like, ah, I didn't feel right this time. You're going home sleeping about it all night. Like, what the hell did I do wrong? Like, I strung this a thousand times. Like, could it be me? And you're just kind of like OCD about it. It's like, oh my God, it's just that one client. But at the end of the day, it's like, relax. Everybody make mistakes or whatever. Or maybe he's just going crazy. I, I feel like we're always trying to find like, 
problems. Like, hey, man, this guy, um, I, I strung this record a thousand times. He said it's a problem. What should I do? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, just let it go and move on to the next situation. Stop, you know, and I, but as stringers, we're just like that. We're like, oh, man, what did I do? What did I do? Because it's a, it's a very routine thing. And it's like, it something is. goes wrong, you're kind of like, eh. mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think about like, back whenever I was doing my thing at home, um, whenever I had some guy who I still full heartedly believe that he just cut the string, but I had given him a new overgrip. It was this whole situation. And he hands me back and says, it broke in two balls, but his, the, the overgrip is like completely a whole different color, whatever. And I remember yeah. messaging you and you're like, dude, like just string it for free once and say, you won't do it again and just let it go. And that was so weird to me to think of just like letting it go. That's just yeah. not in our DNA. Yeah, and it's just it, it, yeah because it, pride too. I think that's one of big thing with the with the tennis community. I know that could be a possible one of your questions, but you know if you ask me, like that's the biggest thing. It's like it's such a high ego type profession because it's like it's not it's it's what you do determines what type of streamer you are, and it's just so sad that we we feel that way. But it is you know it's like everybody's like oh my god if I mess up or, or something I would need to point out what's wrong with that because I'm doing this right so it feels like sometimes we fight against each other I feel like stringers love each other but hate each other at the same time and it's just like that that stringer on stringer hate you know that's just kind of like it's, we got to get over that and I feel like yeah. we are now with, with, with groups like um um unstrung heroes and stuff like that you'll see you kind of see a little tension a little here and there that's not the way I do yeah you know and you get like a of course bit, you know we, it's, it's fun but I think at the end of the day I feel like when I was getting into it there was not too many people who are willing to open up uh, the show about their you know their skills or because they feel like it's competition and it shouldn't be that way it should be like hey you know sensei teach me you know uh, teach me your skills in the fine art of stringing you know and then that's how it should be a master to a sensei or whatever but now when you come into let's say if i went somewhere and say hey kyle teach me how to string you're like i, I wouldn't say you would do it particularly but some string will be like oh he's trying to take my business now nah, I'm, I'm gonna leave him alone like, he's just yeah the wrong way yeah, it, I think it's a really big pride thing. Like, it's just, I don't know, it, it's kind of, it could be like a tennis thing too, because tennis is such a solo sport, but like stringing, like you're on your own. And like, if you screw something up, like that's on like nine times out of 10, that's on you. And it's, it's one of those things and people just get kind of, you know, like someone posts a picture of a racket and they're like, wait, why'd you tie oh, it this way? And it's like, stop. I, I was guilty, string. man. I was guilty. And I think we all learned that lesson one day or the other like someday you point something on and you messed up and somebody points it on you i mean it's it's that stringing karma man it'll come back and trust me i said it all i said some really bold stuff and then now i'm like mm. man maybe yeah. i shouldn't say I, that, I <laughs> I said remember, that I you know remember. but you something happened with so I don't even remember what it was, but I just remember some company did something and you posted like oh. a bunch of Instagram <laughs> stories and it was like 30 minutes of you like ranting and I'm like, dude, this guy is bold. Like he he just speaks his mind. And yeah. you just don't see that with stringers. They're they're scared and they're prideful and it's that's kind of the way it is. So yeah. I'm glad things are changing. Yeah, for me. I, yeah, I think it's I think it's it's that. So uh, but yeah, I do appreciate you having me here, man. I, I feel like Oh man, I feel like once say my days are numbered, but I feel like people like you, man, Kyle, these younger generation, man, you gotta take it over. And um, I'm glad that you have a foundation to work on and have people around you teaching you the right things, and hopefully getting you through. Because like, I'm getting old, man. I'm actually more concerned about this whole metaverse thing. Like, actually, I'm. I think this year was. I think I already said it's like, hey, man, I might be stepping away from this whole. I mean, obviously, I'll be doing string and you know, helping out, but my passion is. I wouldn't say it's gone, um, but for me, it's like I gotta move on, man. I got people. I'm, I'm glad I got people like you taking the helm doing the other stuff to teach the you know the younger generation because i'm just old now so i don't think about is how i can uh, retire in a ferrari or something like that and i could i just if i told him like hey so it's the link if you want to buy me a lamborghini and put a string <laughs> machine on there i'll put the logo on there i'll just hey let me know i, 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 I told it. him like hey I, I, i'll tattoo this link on my neck over here i mean let me know what you want but I, i'm that old so like whatever i do it doesn't even matter anymore so yeah it's up to you brother it's up to you now Sweet. All right. Well, thanks, Smitty. That, that did answer all my questions. And I, I think for a lot of people, um, like you said, a lot of things that, that people haven't heard before. So I'm, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with me today. Oh, yeah. Like I said, man, last thing, man. I mean, it, this is a pretty, uh, I didn't think it was going to last this long because I was like, man, I don't really have much to say, but hey, we got to <laughs> stick together, man. Those, I swear to you guys, um, those who have the power, please, you know, make it a, make it an open playing field. And I'm not saying like there's anything that you guys have to do particularly. It's just more like, imagine me trying to get an organization to do something, right? It's so hard because it's just who the hell is Smitty's across who's Smitty. 
but it's somebody that really matters and have the the authority and have the you know the power to say something. Like, hey, this might not be the fairest thing. Like, hey, why do we only have twenty stringers at this event? Can we do you know? It's, it's always a finance thing. If somebody needs to speak out. Like, hey, we need maybe more apprentice there. Why is there? I know it's the COVID, and I know they want to have too many people on the thing. But let's say if a string team like Selenko, I always tell them, like, hey, man. If we need six, let's bring in 12. You know, if they can come and just learn. Okay, the way to do for me, hands on appreciative of him. I sent him a hundred bucks out of my own cut. I said, hey man, you helped out throughout the night. He was so appreciative. But I feel like I'm going to take a pay cut to help some other guy. No doubt. Like for me, like I, I don't want to do 40 rackets. I'll do 30. How about you do 10? I'll give you some cash on top of that. If we can all think alike and just kind of like, hey, man, I know we all need that money, need that, you know, that fame and that, that, that light. But if we can all just kind of get together and help the next generation, like if I can get, if every stringer had an apprentice at, at an event, we would be all in a better position. And then when we go to the main stage, like, hey, we demand 25, 30 bucks, and everybody doesn't have anything bad to say about it. You know? Until then, until we can kind of organize together, you know, we're going to see those. Ten dollars stringers, fifteen dollars stringers. It's gonna be all over the place, you know. So we just need to come together and just be a little open-minded. And say, hey, man, maybe some of these junior stringers they they can only get there if we lead the way. You know? So thanks for having me, man. I, I hope Thank this uh, becomes a big success for you, and um, I wish you all the best in 2020. I'm sure I'm gonna see you this year, some way or the other. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm gonna obviously keep following you on there and. Uh... I love that we get to work together so much and you're, we're both. Open yeah, man. Hey, so send me a thing. I might, I might make a character out of you, man. Let me know what you want to talk about. I'll make you a character inside that Selenko world. Man. Let's, let's oh, that'd be that. sweet. We'll that'd be so meta. sweet. Be, we'll have to find a cool avatar for you, but uh, we'll get I you on it. in there, brother. All right, man. See you in the That's metaverse, good. brother. All right. Thank you, Spinny. Talk to you later. Peace. Bye. Peace. Bye, guys. All right, so that was my interview with Smitty from Mains and Crosses. If you guys could go and check him out on Instagram, give him a follow, that would be awesome, would really help both of us out. Um, yeah, make sure you guys, if you enjoyed this episode, to follow the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, and check out the live video uh, interview on YouTube. Um, my hope is to get more people like Smitty, more uh, open-minded people looking to kind of change the stringing industry and look at what we can do to improve. I think for many stringers, stringing is something that they do on their own and it's not really a cooperative thing with other people in the world. And I really appreciate Smitty kind of taking the time to explain to us that um, it's kind of time in, in the tennis world to start working together and really start um, problem solving as, as a group of stringers, as a group of even coaches. Um, and yeah, that's kind of why Smitty has been, been such, a, such a role model for me in, in this world. So I really appreciate him taking the time and I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next one.